is um, knowledge in Wikipedia. So Wikipedia has information about all the cities in the world, the so population, the mayors. So it should be uh, able to answer us actually the simple question, what are the 10 largest cities in the world that have a female mayor? How do we get this information out of Wikipedia? If we just type it into the search engine, well, it won't work, obviously, because the search engine is dumb. It doesn't understand the question. Um, there's no big surprise here. But there is one way Wikipedia does answer this kind of things, and this is with lists. Wikipedia has very early introduced the idea of having long lists that are completely humanly curated, maintained, and updated. So what you will find are lists like the list of countries by GDP, um, all written down by hand. You have the list of countries by GDP per capita. You have the list of countries by GDP per parita. You have the list of countries by GDP per parita per capita. Uh, and so on and so on. You have also just, there are tons of lists. I just give you a few favorite of mine. Um, this is the list of wartime cross-dressers. <laughs> the list of animals with fraudulent diplomas. <laughs> and my absolute favorite, the list of inventors killed by their own inventions. <laughs> now, this list don't only exist in English. We actually have to completely maintain also in other languages. So the list of inventors killed by their own inventions also exists in Spanish, Portuguese, French, Polish, Hungarian, Finnish, and Japanese. So all these languages keep this list updated all the time, manual. The editors just walk there, look at the other lists, keep, uh, keep them up to date, and so on. There are so many lists that people started organizing lists of lists, and then there were so many lists of lists that people started organizing lists of lists of lists. The list of lists of lists, basically we have a category of lists in um, the English Wikipedia, which is a hierarchical category of lists, with lists of lists of lists, and actually this goes pretty deep down. And in this list of lists, we find the list of people, where we find the list of people by occupation, where we find the list of office holders, where we find the list of mayors, and here we find the list of first female mayors. It gets pretty close to the original question, but not exactly answering. So we have to admit, Wikipedia does not have all the answers. Um, we have all the knowledge inside of Wikipedia, but we can't get answers to our questions. How is that? Well, it's easy, computers are stupid. If we have an article like this one about Berlin, a human can read it and it understands that Berlin has a certain population, it has a certain mayor, it was founded at a certain point of time, etc. If a machine looks at the same article, it basically looks like this. They don't understand anything. To look at it, they see, oh, yo, there's a link, there's a number with something in squares behind it, and there's a number. Well, it can guess maybe something, but in reality, it doesn't really understand what the connections between these things are. Computers do not understand, especially they don't understand text. And this is where we can help, where humans can help actually to let the machine understand things better so that the machine in return can answer our questions. So, and this is the idea of Wikidata basically, providing the machine, a w providing a way that we can enter the meaning of those things into the machine so that they can answer better. By the way, Wikidata doesn't have a logo yet, so that's why there's no ni nice and shiny logo. We're currently in the voting process. So these are the um, candidates, and you can just go to our, um, to our website on Meta and vote for it. We have currently more than 800 votes in, so the voting closes tonight at eight o'clock um, local time. So if you do have an account on one of the Wikimedia wikis, go to it, you can give your vote, and then tomorrow in the panel we will actually announce the winner. So the page can be found at Meta Wikidata, or if you can't read uh, Wikitext, it's basically on this URL. Or you can also access it now by the shiny new URL that has been switched on last week, so it's just on wikidata.org. So the idea of Wikidata is to be for data what Commons is for multimedia files. To have one central repository where the structured data is and can be accessed by the different Wikipedias. Um, so 
this is this is a mock-up of how Wikidata would look like. Basically, for an entry like Berlin, we enter information like its population, like the um, uh, like the mayor and, stu and stuff like this, and it's there in structured information. Once you have this information, a structured information, you can simply go and translate it because all the pieces are just entities in their own right, can be translated, can have labels in different languages. So you don't have to only look at it in English, you can just switch over to the German version, and it's the very same data set displayed to you in a different language. This means if someone in Nigeria is editing something about their own town, it will be immediately available to the Chinese Wikidata editor, and because they're all working on the very same database, and everyone can access it um, up to date. So the idea of Wikidata is to provide a database of the world's knowledge that anyone can edit. We collect references and quotes from millions of data items. So this is an idea that has been developed in the EU Project Render. Wikidata is not about the truth. We don't say this is the population of Berlin. We don't say this is um, where uh, Palestine belongs to or whatever. We actually have sources for every single fact. So we are a secondary database and reflect the full diversity of the knowledge out there. We're not deciding about wrong or right. We're not deciding about the truth. We're just being um, reflecting what is out there, what is being said in the sources, and people can decide, depending on the sources, what they want to endorse and what they want to use. Just as Wikipedia does not um, consider original research and does not want to be reflecting how the world really is, but actually to be the sum of the human knowledge out there. Um, so if we look at it, how it looks like in the interface, basically, we can have for, for a problematic entry, like for example, the population of Mumbai, different um, entries explaining them. So we have, for, for Mumbai, the population actually ranges between 12 million and 20 million, which is a pretty big range, depending on which date exactly it was taken, if it was an estimate, is it the official census by the Indian Statistical um, Institute, is it an estimate given by things like the UNO. Um, all these different numbers can be reflected in their full diversity and users can then actually check them out, figure out how they have penned, and take the one that fits the needs most. Um, the main goal of Wikidata is not to become the biggest data heap out there, not to collect as much data as possible, but rather to engage a sustainable community that maintains the data that keeps it up to date, that understands the data, and that um, takes care of it. So as with Wikipedia, the success of um, Wikidata is not measured by the number of statements that we have, or by the number of articles in the Wikipedia case, but rather by the activity of editors that are there, that keep it clean, that keep the spam out, and that help maintaining it. So our, one of our main goals is actually to to think about the incentive mechanisms for Wikidata a lot, to, um, to, have the, 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 um, to have a system where we can engage a big community and not just to overload them with donations from outside and have billions and billions of data items inside that no one ever looked at and they're just maintained by bots. For Wikipedia, the goal of Wikidata is to at the same time increase the quality of Wikipedia articles and decrease the maintenance costs. If the data for the info boxes or for the for lists as we've seen before come from a central data repository, there are many more eyes seeing the data. If today there is a Wikipedia article about a small French city on the Yoruba Wikipedia, it is very likely that this article was created by a bot, kept updated by other bots, and no humans ever looked at it. If someone comes in and actually changes the population of their city by a hundredfold, no one would notice. And finally, we want to deliver the software uh, um, that we are creating so that other people can also create similar projects and provide a look at our best practices we develop for the project. We have a great team assembled in order to uh, build Wikidata in, at Wikimedia Germany. Um, those that are here from, um, from the team that, that, are, that made it to Wikimedia are sitting in the front, and I really want to point out that they're doing a great job for the last three months and for the next and uh, for the following nine months. I hope that it will be the same. Um, we got fun, uh, funders, external funders, um, to, in order to support our development, and I want to thank the Allen Institute for Artificial Intelligence, the, uh, the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation, and Google, who have made this work possible. 
How, um, one of the things that I'm announcing today for the first time publicly is that we will have a three-part advisory board that will help us with building Wikidata. The advisory board consists of three parts. The first part are external advisors that we, that we have invited. I will come to them back in a second. The second one is an advisory board consisting of staff members that will support us in um, building the system and in the, and getting it deployed. And finally, we want to build up an advisory board of community advisors, basically uh, people from the community that will help us to um, keep in touch with the community and it will help us not to do something that is completely um, out of sync with the wishes and uh, goals of the community. Regarding, the, um, for the last part, we will soon send out um, emails and uh, describe how we want to build them up. For the external experts, the list of external experts you can see here, and um, we are having a public mailing list where we get discussions from them and, um, we'll, uh, and um, to see the building of the, some of them are actually here, like Mike Lang's here in the back, and um, others, and I'm really glad about um, uh, the help that we're getting from there. What are we going to do, actually? So the project is separated in three phases. The first phase deals with language links, the second phase with info boxes, and the third phase of so-called inline queries. I'm going through the phases uh, one by one right now. So the language links are those links that you have on the left-hand side that connect, the, uh, that connect Wikipedia articles in one language versions with Wikipedia articles in other language versions. And as you probably know, they are currently written in the actual wiki text. So what you see here, um, uh, the links, for example, for the city like Berlin, if you click on edit, on the English Wikipedia, you get a long list, several hundred of links to the same um, article in the other language versions. If you go to any of these and click on edit again, you get basically the same list again, and so on, and so on, and so on, in many, 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 many languages where we have them um, being displayed again and again. And again. Oops. It's, it's a lot. Um, actually, this data, this, um, the different language links that we have here, make about 1% of the whole um, English Wikipedia. Doesn't sound too bad, but as soon as we go to the other languages, um, like for example, Danish down here, they consist of 13% of the articles. And for many of the 200 Wikipedias, actually, the, um, the language links themselves make up more than 50% of the whole content of that Wikipedia. So if you go to an arbitrary small Wikipedia, let's say under 10,000 articles, click on random um, article, click on edit, probably what you will see is just a long list of language links and nothing else. This also is being reflected in the history of those articles. Actually, for most of those articles, just try to test, go to one of these, click on random, click on history, you will just see bots working on them, updating the language links again and again, and you, and you will have a hard time actually finding the last time a human has edited a page. If you're trying to work on those small Wikipedias, this is a very frustrating experience because all you see is bots changing the thing and you don't even see where the humans, uh, where you could find humans to interact with who have worked with you on the content of the article instead of bots updating the uh, language links. So the idea is that we have this all in Wikidata. So the language links would be centrally um, uh, would be centrally maintained in one list and then the Wikipedia simply pull this list and display it. Um, for some cases, like, um, actually for 99.2% of the cases, this is, an, uh, this is a very simple thing because they are just one-to-one -one connections. For some cases, there's a little, it's getting more complicated and for those we will have, um, have switches and magic words that would allow you to, dis to not use the um, central uh, language links and just use the, the, the current system if you want to. But for most of those, uh, we'll basically get rid of the language links out of the wiki text and we will uh, we'll pick them up from um, Wikidata. So that's about the first phase, language links. Um, we're currently talking about deployment of this thing. We hope that we will deploy it this, this summer, early autumn. That's the current plan right now. The second phase is then about um, augmenting the info boxes, basically talking about the other side of the article. 
So the info boxes, as you have seen in today's presentation, actually, um, whenever you click on edit on um, one of the bigger articles, what you see is this huge call to, uh, to a template filled with data. And this scares a lot of the, uh, the users. The idea is that the data that you are, that's being entered here in, the, in this course could as easily be entered actually in a nice um, form-based um, system, which is Wikidata. And then the info box could call Wikidata and fill itself with the data from there instead of having it being called in a template, which has the advantage that when, it, when we update the data in Wikidata, it is being propagated to all the different language versions. So um, the population of the French city that we talked uh, earlier, once it's changed, it's changing on all the language versions at the same time and not being have to be updated in all of the 200 of them, where most of us don't speak all the 200 languages just because uh, we want to update this data. Finally, inline queries. Um, that's for us the big question mark, how far we will get here. Inline queries is an idea that we developed in Semantic Media Wiki. Once we have the data in a machine readable form, we can actually create visualizations and interactive features out of that. So um, these are just examples that we already have in Semantic Media Wiki, like charts, like pictures, galleries, like uh, maps that are automatically created and updated depending on the data that is inside of Wikidata. So you could imagine that it, might be, that it will be at one point much easier to actually add those charts, to make them interactive, to have filters on them inside of Wikipedia, to make a more um, engaging encyclopedia that has interactive features where you can drill down in the data, where you can um, access the data in more graphical format, and it's always being automatically created so you don't have to update it by hand. You don't have to recreate the SVG and upload it to comments and then um, again, upload it in the, inside of your Wikipedia, but you actually make a query against Wikidata and the data gets uh, re-rendered um, re every time we have, uh, uh, we have um, updates to it. So, in closing, Wikidata will provide an editable common resource for data with freely reusable machine-readable data that, you know, that's not only been used inside of the Wikipedias, even though it has been my uh, main point here in this talk, obviously, but the data will be available for everyone out there to reuse, for your own websites, for your, uh, just like comments today is already, for your own applications. It will be a common uh, accessible knowledge base of uh, data for the whole web. It will enable this kind of micro-contributions that um, Eric talked before. So a lot of the data that we have here can, um, is much more amenable to um, micro-contributions in having the full text editing of Wikipedia. Uh, humans and bots can collaborate on a new different level here because it is much more split and uh, much easier comp compartmentalized than we have in Wikipedia. And finally, we want to be available in all the 280 languages of Wikipedia from day one, basically providing the data um, in a much more comprehensive way than the Wikipedias could and thus get a bit closer to the common vision of the Wikimedia movements of providing the sum of all human knowledge to everyone. Thank you for your attention for this first part of the presentation. I would imagine that there are a lot of questions and um, we don't have too much time to actually take them all. I want to point out that uh, now we'll follow a little bit more interactive presentations, this one by Daniel and by Jeroen, and tomorrow we will have a panel where we have basically the whole time devoted to questions. So we will take a few questions now until Lydia tells me to stop, and um, tomorrow in the panel we'll have more time to actually answer questions. And if you still have some, just grab one of us here in the front and um, ask us at any time you want to. Yes, you can. And don't forget, go vote. Until 8 o'clock today, um, we want your votes in for the logo. Sorry, you're getting a microphone in a second. Uh, yeah, you mentioned Semantic Media Wiki, and I'm wondering if you could uh, say a couple words about the relationship of Wikidata to that and also DBpedia and, and where the boundaries are. I'm a little bit confused. 
Sure. Uh, actually, DBpedia was on my backup slide and some in the media because well, but Daniel's already building away. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> no trouble. Um, so DBpedia is basically Wikidata backward. Um, DBpedia is extracting the data from the info boxes and publishing them in machine readable formats like RDF. In Wikidata, we will actually uh, have a, f a place where we can edit the data and create the info boxes out of that. So we, we just have it completely backward. Otherwise, it's the same. Um, Semantic Media Wiki, on the other hand, is also developed by most of the people that are working on Wikidata right now. So all the experiences that we have taken from um, Semantic Media Wiki is flowing into Wikidata. The thing of Semantic Media Wiki, though, is that it doesn't really scale to the use case of having a Semantic Media Wiki for the Wikipedias of one common multilingual um, database with references and so on. Semantic Media Wiki itself will remain probably for a long time much more powerful than the software that we're creating with Wikidata, um, but they have very complementary use cases. What we want to achieve, though, is to have overlap between the code that we want to share that and have basically as close as possible a common uh, code base in the end. So for example, the, the semantic result formats and other parts of Semantic Media Wiki are fully re reusable and that whatever it's created for Wikidata will also be reusable in Semantic Media Wiki. And we want to achieve in the end a unified user base and a unified code base. But I can't promise how far we will get there. I'm sorry, I just want to make sure that I am correctly understanding your last answer. Um, Actually, let me specify this as a request. Please make it possible to use Wikidata without enabling any semantic media wiki code. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if, if we have to bring semantic media wiki into, semantic media wiki has some huge upsides and some huge downsides, mm -hmm. most of which will not be shared for better and worse with Wikidata. Please make it possible for people who want to use Wikidata to not have to bring in Semantic Media Wiki's downsides. Yes. Thank you. That's, that's already on our plan. Good. Behind you. Hi. I'd like to ask about a report um, program that maybe could somehow connect. I, sorry, repeat. A reports program. Some kind of a program that I can create reports. I mean, you had charts and you had all different nice things happening there. So are there some applications that already exist that I can, you know, put in this field, this, this? Um, I expect that those programs will be built once we have our API idea. Our data will be accessible. We will have several ways of accessing the data. And building reports programs on top of that should be fairly trivial, actually. And that's also one of the things that happened very soon with things like Semantic Media Wiki. So I expect this will happen rather sooner than later with Wikidata. Um, this is nothing that we as a core team uh, concentrate on. That's something where I expect actually the outside community to contribute uh, code and tools. And I see already requests for that being happening. Okay, one last question. One last question, okay. I said we will have more time tomorrow for questions. Have you been in contact with the statistical offices of the certain uh, of all the countries that oh. might already provide some raw data for this? Um, we have uh, we have been approached by a number, not by all of the countries, but a number of statistical offices um, of uh, some countries, and we are we are talking on some places. The thing is, one of the things that I pointed out is that our goal is not to simply collect data from out there, but rather to go for, to build a community. So what we really want to, what we are really careful about is about big data donations. That's something that a community, once it is there, has to decide upon. It's nothing that we as developers should decide, oh yes, we're taking this data set, we're taking that data set. Once there is, um, a living Wikidata community, they will take the decision uh, in order which data sets they will include, which data sets they will simply point to, which will be possible with the software, so we can simply point to external data sources and um, instead of having everything inside. And um, this will then be decided, nothing, we will provide with the interfaces that will allow for such uploads, but we will not decide on what to take in and what not. 
Okay, thank you very much for the questions. I'm handing over for, to Daniel for the second talk. And um, as a reminder, vote until, for the logos until to 8 o'clock today. And tomorrow there's the panel. Um, be there if you have more questions. There will be enough time for many more questions. Or just catch us. Thanks. So, yeah, it's still on. OK. Um, in my talk, I will be focusing on some of the more technical aspects of Wikidata. Uh, basically, for, and, and thus focusing on the, the database aspect of our mission statement. And the questions of uh, how are we going to address the technical challenges that arise from trying to make such a complex database scale to the size of Wikipedia. The first aspect is we want to um, provide a multilingual or cross-lingual database. So our concepts are uh, addressable using a canonical numer numerical ID um, instead of the human readable titles. Um, and this numerical ID will actually be used by MediaWiki internally to handle these um, data items. The human readable language specific labels will be used in the UI. And in addition to the to labels, we will have aliases, so you can have multiple names for the same thing. And there will be descriptions, so you can make a distinction between Berlin in Germany and the 12 or so Berlins in, in the US. Um, one important thing to know is that the labels and descriptions that are used to show the data items in listings and so on to humans uh, cannot be used to address the pages directly. Um, the canonical way to address the, the, the data items is using the numerical ID. The second aspect of multilingual data is uh, something that Danny has already discussed in some detail. It's the interlanguage links, or from the Wikidata perspective, the site links. Wikidata, each, each item, each thing on Wikidata has uh, a list of links to all the Wikipedia pages in all the languages that describe that thing. And it's important to understand that this is actually, that, that is actually a unique identifier because a Wikipedia page will only have one subject. It is about one thing. And only one page on a given Wikipedia can, about, can be about a, a given data item. Um, yes. Uh, are there questions so far? I will try to ask for questions every now and then. Okay, so the obvious question here is what happens when a certain Wikipedia or several Wikipedias divide the uh, subject that you have already on Wikidata in multiple articles? Then you will have to create another item on Wikidata. Um, there could be a mechanism to automate this, but we currently do not have a mechanism to do, do such a thing with uh, automation on, on the Wikipedia, so for 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 the beginning, it can be left to the community to handle this. Also, also just to add on that, um, this is far more infrequent than most people think. So our experiments show that more than 99% of all languages are simple one-to-one -one links. And it's only a very small number of links for concepts like river or city or god that actually have complicated structures. And for those, we can still just use the normal language link system. Another question? Oh, yeah, in the back. Uh, when you describe the, the, such a structure, I'd like to, you to use some examples so we can understand them. So, uh, for example, when you say uh, one item uh, relates to only one article, then say, for example, Berlin is this or something. For well, the next, for, uh, following uh, the talk, can you do that? Yeah. 
Give more it, is, it is kind of hard for me because I don't do not know the names to, for Berlin in different languages. Um, no, but in, in there invent is, something. I know. There is there is um, well, there will be one one item for for the um, for the city of Munich, which is called München in German in German, and also the article in the German Wikipedia is called München, of course, and uh, the one in the English language Wikipedia is called Munich, and for each there are also going to be probably other places, probably in the US, that uh, have that name. Um, and so the labels are not unique, um, but the, the pages on the Wikipedias are going to be about just one thing, one item. And uh, there will only be one page on the English language Wikipedia about that thing. And there's only going to be one in the German Wikipedia and so on. Basically, this is the structure of well-behaved interlanguage links, the 99%. Okay, so let's, let, let me get on to the next part. In order to do this, we need to be able to somehow store structured data in MediaWiki. And the question is, how do we do that? And we decided on a very, very simple approach, which is make a JSON structure and store it on a wiki page instead of the wiki page, uh, wiki text. So it's not going to be somehow included in the wiki text or hidden in the wiki text or encoded in the wiki text. It's going to be there instead of the wiki text. And the normal text-based editing will simply be disabled. But on the database level, it will be exactly the same. It will work exactly the same for the import and export. It will work exactly the same for the backups, for the dumps, for the, for the revisions. They all work exactly the same as for wiki text. Um, the, the JSON structure we are going to use looks something like this. And this is just for phase one, right? So you have an entity ID, you have uh, labels in different languages, aliases in different languages, descriptions in different languages, um, and you have the links to the individual Wikipedias. As you can see, we are not using the, the language identifiers for the, uh, for the wiki project because these are not languages, these are Sites, right? That's important, an important detail. Um, okay. The, this structure is going to become a bit more complicated once we actually include properties like population or date of birth or whatever and start to address the fact that there will be multiple values given for that property by different sources or for different points in time or using different methods and that there may be multiple sources giving the same uh, value and so on. But because we are not using, uh, because we are using JSON um, or in, uh, more generally a document oriented way to uh, store this, um, we, we are very flexible. We can encode all that without too much trouble and uh, still stay efficient. Um, this system just retrieves the entire document with everything using the ID. And uh, we don't have to run hundreds of, we don't have to collect information from hundreds of triples or anything like that. The, the method or the, what is necessary to teach MediaWiki to be able to do this is uh, is something I call the, the content handler facility. Basically, each page and each, each revision will have a content model associated with it, and there will be handler code for that content model. And that handler will simply be responsible for serializing that type of content, rendering that type of content, providing methods for editing that type of content, showing diffs for that type of content, and so on. Right. Um, another round of questions, perhaps? Yes, back there. Sorry for making you jump. <laughs> what comes to mind immediately is that you appear to be mechanizing info boxes. Now, how do you plan to handle the little text images, the little images that are part of the info, info boxes sometimes? Like, the uh, little in images that are part of info boxes, like flags? Flags, yeah, maps, flags and, and so yeah. on, yes. Um, these will simply be referenced. And it, uh, it, there will be different types of references. There will be a way to reference other items 
like, I don't know, uh, if I have an info box about a book, I may want to reference the author as an item, and that will then locally resolve to a link to, that respect, to the respective page on that wiki, if it exists. Um, for images, we will simply be referencing documents on Wikimedia Commons, I expect. Um, I don't know if we will support local uploads for that purpose. Probably not, but that is undecided. Um, but by the ability to simply um, address thing, uh, documents or, or uh, media files on Commons, um, it will become simple to include the respective files in the template. I will be talking about the actual generation of the visual content later. About templates, um, you know, you have said that uh, info boxes will be you know, substituted by this uh, gathering data from Wikidata. But uh, I'm wondering if uh, uh, you checked if all the info boxes are the same and contain the same data on all Wikipedias. And they don't. They okay. don't have to. And because we, it is important to understand, we are not replacing the info boxes. The info boxes will not come from Wikidata. The information in the info boxes will come from Wikidata. I will, I will be talking about that in a second. Maybe one more question? How, how, how am I doing time-wise? In the example JSON response that you showed, I noticed that there were many different uh, languages which would seem to be extraneous based on, uh, say, a user's preferred language. Would you, sh would you return, say, each of those different labels on a given response for a given page, or only the ones that are relevant for the user's language? Well, the, uh, the user will get HTML, right? And in the HTML, there will, of course, only be whatever is relevant for that user. Um, what, what you're seeing here is the internal representation in the database. This, so all the information will be there. And we will also take some of the information and write it to dedicated tables, just like we do now with page links or image links or whatever for, for indexed access. But that will not be the case for everything. Anyway, um, well, and if you are talking about responses in JSON, API-wise, that depends on the module and the exact query. So in some cases, yes, in some cases, no. I will, I will go on, and maybe we will have some more time for questions in the end. Right, uh, we already talked about templates. So in order to use that information that we have on, uh, in Wikidata on Wikipedia, we have to have a way to address these data chunks from Wikitext. And the idea is to have a part of the function that lets you simply ask for the value of a property. And that parser function will be used in the template definition. So people editing an article usually, usually do not see it at all. It's just in the info box for cities, there will be uh, the parser function call that will ask for the value for the population. And um, because we have this site link or language link mechanism, it is clear for every page which is the corresponding data item on Wikidata. So I do not even have to specify which item I'm talking about, but it will be just the item for this page. Um, we will have options for formatting and collation of multiple values in case there are multiple, multiple values and mechanism for indicating conflicting values and all that kind of details. But the, the essential mechanism is, is very simple. Um, however, we will have a local cache of the data item because otherwise we would have to make an API call to another site every time we render, we, we render the page, which would be extremely wasteful and, uh, well, generally not a good idea. Um, there will be a background process that basically checks a central notification stream that works very much like the, the um, recent changes table we have now and will simply check um, what changed since the last run and will update the corresponding pages on the local wiki. Um, currently, we are using just a, a shared MySQL table for this, but in future, this mechanism, this, this feed, may be a pop-up, uh, pops up, hub up um, interface, which, uh, well, Ryan said they, they are going to implement it, so if the uh, foundation is going to do us the favor, and we're very happy, because then third parties can use the same mechanism to get updates. 
Right. Uh, questions about this? Going once, going, oh, back there. We need more microphones to go around. I think we, don't we have a few spare ones? Oh, they, they have cables. I um, had a question about the info boxes you were talking about earlier. If you look at an info box now, like a population number will typically have a citation right after it. I noticed you had the sources embedded in the wiki data. Is the ultimate plan for the markup to be able to bring back both the full citation as well as the data? Yes. So that if you change it on wiki data, nothing needs to be changed. Yes, uh, that, is, that is indeed the plan. This, this parser function I was talking about, I didn't want to go into too much detail, but you will be able to address individual parts of the statements, like the sources, or uh, the point in time, uh, or, what, or footnotes, or whatever you may have attached to that. You, may, um, you, you will be able to address that individually, and there will probably also be a default thing that just says, well, give me something sensible that includes all that. Right. Uh, I think I will just go on so we have at least a little time in the end. Uh, one thing, of course, is uh, one thing that is very important on Wikipedia, of course, is watching things, right? You want to know when things change. And if you watch the page on uh, Washington, D.C. or whatever, and someone edits the population number, you want to know. You want to know about it. And if it is maintained on Wikidata, how is that go going to happen? Well, we have this background process that no is notified whenever something changes on Wikidata and this is updating the page. And it can, can simply write a record into the recent changes table, which will then cause it to show up on people sh people's watch lists. Um, so the, the mechanism is basically, the notification mechanism itself is already there, it just needs to be tied in. Uh, we actually want to make this go even further, so we would like to even insert virtual entries into the page history uh, that do not like duplicate the text, but um, simply create a new timestamp saying something changed here. So you can actually go to the history and select a diff, and you will then see a data diff, a data diff generated by Wikidata um, in a way that make, actually makes sense for structured data, not just a diff of JSON blobs. Um, there are a few technical details to be sorted out. Um, most importantly, we, in order to do that, we need to know which revision of the data item was used in which version of the article at, at which time. But um, I, I suppose we will be able to sort this out. Right, so um, now for the final round of questions. How, how much time do we have? Seven minutes for questions, that's great. Because I, I, I really hate presentations. I, lo I love conversations. <laughs> if we could turn this mic on, then this could go, go to, the, to the audience. Okay, so my question was, uh, you said something about the local copy of the data. Um, will it be a full copy or just of the objects that are present on the on that project? Um, it will be just the objects that are actually used on that project and it's not even, for simplicity we will probably cache the entire object but it's, it, is, it would even be feasible to say okay we will only cache the bits of the object that are actually used like the, the, that language for instance. And how do you know uh, what is the object on uh, oh, on Wikidata? That's not clear for me at this point. Well, the object on Wikidata itself contains a list of the wiki of the Wikipedia pages that correspond to that item. It's a one-to-one -one mapping. That's phase one. I can I can simply ask Wikidata give me the ID of the object for the Wikipedia page about shoes. One there, one there. Okay, so the question is, since you're basically going to be able to I transclude different properties onto a page, and the page has a history, will you be able to transclude 
uh, parts of the history, so you can have like a flag revision of a specific property in essence. Um, or can you can you include in like an info box an old version or a specific time um, time of a property so that if it you can protect yourself against vandalism if it gets changed at a certain area? I don't think that would be a good idea. I actually think that would be very confusing. Uh, I think the mechanism we have to protect against vandalism is watching things. Um, there will be a mechanism, of course, to protect entire data items that are ext extremely prone to, to vandalism. But um, even would you want a mechanism for including a specific revision of a template on a page so that when people change that template that is not updated on the pages? Are you, that, I think that would be very, very confusing. <laughs> really, I, I wouldn't. <laughs> There's someone back there waiting. You may have covered this, but I missed it. But so how does the data get uh, converted into HTML on the page? Do you still have to use a template? Or? That was a bit about the parser function. The parser function will, uh, will get the data from, from Wikidata and basically in, inject it into the wiki text of the, of the template when the template is evaluated. and then this is handled like normal template parameters. Can I? Yes. I'm the question about <coughs> editing the data, because if you edit the article, you see uh, the data is transcluded, but to edit the actual data, you have to go on Wikidata. That's right. Uh, I initially, yes, but that is not the plan. The plan okay. is that you will edit on site. Okay. Meaning um, that if you, cl if you have an info box, you will have an edit link in the info box. And if you click that link, uh, you get a pop-up of some sort um, that will allow you to change the value or actually more precisely to, by default, add a statement about that property. And uh, that will simply go to Wikidata using the API. Two questions there. Um, you may have covered this, I'm sorry if I missed it, but do you see uh, any prospect of returning um, structures of data as opposed to individual data items such as label value pairs, cities and populations or something in sets for uh, parsing at the other end or do you expect everything to be returned as individual items? Um. There is a full-fledged API where you can uh, do that kind of thing, of course, and you can get the, 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 full, the full JSON structure or only inv individual bits of it in one language or in all the languages. So um, I do not, well, you, you said parsing. Well, where would you parse it? Not in the wiki text. So well, what I was talking about. No, but you're also talking about other websites. Uh, it becomes a, ge yes. a general and I expect, query structure. I expect them to use the, the web API, of course, yes. Yeah. Oh, hello. Uh, will there be talk pages to discuss uh, changes, and if so, will that be in English or what? Um, we have not solved the problem of people speaking different languages, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one last question. Uh, but Sorry, yes, yes, of course. Uh, the, the items are wiki pages, and they have talk pages. Uh, are we out of time now? I think so. Or maybe we are out of questions. Then you can take over. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Hey. Um, so this is the third and last talk about Wikidata for today. Um, it's not going to be that long, um, and it won't be that technical either, because, yeah, well. Um, so I'm going to talk about how Wikidata um, is a platform, and why it's important to see this as a platform. Um, so, um, and also explain how you can actually use it on your own and extend it. Um, then get, uh, well, go uh, give you some of my thoughts on how this all relates to semantic MetaWiki, as uh, some earlier question already uh, touched upon. 
Um, and perhaps the most important part of this talk is actually getting your feedback because we're still in a very early phase of the, fro of the project. Um, and this is a good time um, for you to give feedback on which kind of extension points you would actually like to see implemented. And of course, we'll also have some kittens. <laughs> so, um, wh why would you want to see it as a platform? Um, well, um, Daniel already um, sort of briefly mentioned this in his talk, um, is that we, of course, want people to get access to the free data we have in Wikipedia. That's the whole point, right? And this does not necessarily need to be via Wikipedia itself. Um, this can also be via third-party applications, which will now be um, possible because of um, the data being available via an API that you can query. Um, and these third-party applications um, can be very specialized in certain topics, um, thus enabling you to get at the data in a uh, form that's much more convenient for that type of data. Um, and these applications can then also interleave this data with um, things that might not really fit into Wikipedia or things that are proprietary, but still um, use the data from um, Wikipedia to enrich the user experience. Um, we can also get more contributors um, because of these, this usage in third-party applications. Um, so third-party applications could um, provide certain kinds of editing functionality where you can just add data which gets then submitted back to Wikidata. And again, these applications can be a lot more specific to certain domains um, and be much more user-friendly for people to actually enter these types of data. Um, Wikidata also lowers the, well, lowers the minimum editing size in a way because you don't have to go edit an article and do stuff. You can just add one, one, one fact, one number, um, and um, much in line as with um, marking articles as cited and things like that, you could just vote for one number or stuff like that, right? And um, it facilitates uh, things like gamification, which um, third-party applications could use to build games or educational tools or whatnot that then actually also contribute back um, to the wiki data data. And of course, um, we won't only be able to get more editors um, if people are building applications on top of Wikidata, it's likely that we'll see some of them at least uh, coming back and actually contributing to um, the Wikipedia related code. Right, um, so extension points. Uh, first and foremost, we have the, our, our, our API, in, which is a regular PHP API for MediaWiki. Um, I'll get into more detail uh, for each point uh, later on. Um, our code is actually implemented as MediaWiki extensions, so we'll also have the regular PHP hooks. Um, we'll also have a JavaScript API, and um, the thing Daniel already briefly mentioned, um, the propagating of changes um, from the repository to the clients is also a nice point where you can hook in and do additional stuff. So, um, actually we already got quite some questions that sort of touch upon this. Um, the API is able to resolve items, um, so you can give it um, a site identifier, for example, the English Wikipedia, and a page title, for example, Berlin, and it will then return you the ID um, of the, the Wikidata item involved. Um, of course, you can also just get the information about the items. Um, you can get specific information or just the whole, the whole item. Um, yeah, there was a question about this as well, right? So you can just get the things in one language or in all the languages, depending on what you want. And um, these API modules, um, also allow you to immediately resolve, um, so you can also, instead of giving the ID, 
just give a site identifier and a title uh, to avoid having to do two API requests. Um, of course, these also allow modifying of items. Um, our user interfaces on Wikidata actually use the API um, to do things. So um, yeah, it will definitely work because we're, we're using it ourselves. Um, and then there are so, some planned things um, which are not there yet, um, and these might not be all of them, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll have some way of also modifying the definitions of um, properties and uh, of queries uh, rather than just items. Um, and we'll have a way of obtaining actual results of queries as well uh, via the API. Um, we actually don't really have a lot of PHP hooks yet. Um, we haven't really put much thought into this, so feedback here is definitely very welcome. One of the things we have already is um, hooks that allow you to do um, additional um, indexing or updating of um, secondary data whenever an item gets updated. Um, so for instance, if you would want to build um, a list of, or, or a page that shows the trending items, uh, so the items that have been edited a lot recently, um, you, you could use this to build your own additional um, database table for this, optimized for figuring out this information. Um, and some things we could also do um, pretty similar to what uh, can be done in SMW. Uh, Semantic MetaWiki is um, allowing extensions to uh, add additional data types, adding additional visualizations, uh, these kinds of things. And um, for those who don't really like PHP, we have this JavaScript API. Um, well, we actually don't have it yet. Um, it's planned. Um, so what this will involve is having JavaScript objects um, that allow you to, well, um, get items and have them described in a sort of standardized fashion, uh, which can then be used by um, additional extensions built on top of um, Wikidata, and of course, uh, the user scripts we have in MediaWiki. So, um, change propagation. Um, so, um, what I mean with this is uh, whenever um, an item on the um, Wikidata repository gets edited. Um, the data gets uh, propagated to the clients, which cache it locally. Um, and you can hook into this updating process to um, do additional stuff yourself. Um, and this is actually very similar to hooking into the, the data updates um, for the PHP hooks, so you can do similar stuff with it. Um, and you can, of course, further propagate the things uh, to somewhere else, um, allowing people to um, build, for example, feeds of stuff that's happening in certain categories or whatnot. And it also uh, allows people to create a mirror of Wikidata or part of Wikidata and keep it up to date. Um, at the moment, this is implemented, um, as Daniel already mentioned, um, as uh, a script, uh, it's actually a, a maintenance script, MinaWiki maintenance script, um, which is part of an extension. Well, we have three extensions. Um, we have one for um, the repository, so for Wikidata, which will be on wikidata.org, and we have one for the clients, uh, which will, in case of the Wikidata project, be uh, the different Wikipedias, right? Um, and then we have a third extension, which um, we call um, the lib, uh, which just holds common code, um, such as the descriptions of items, which is needed by both, uh, and which also holds this maintenance script. Um, yes. So um, since this is implemented as MediaWiki extensions, you can, uh, it, it's not specific at all to Wikipedia, so you can just set it up for your own use case. Um, so yes, uh, the, these are the two extensions. Um, yeah, 
they, they are also currently in the, the Wikimedia Git repository, and they have um, their associated extension pages on MediaWiki.org, so you can just get the extensions and play around with them, uh, see what kind of stuff you can do with it, and if you're a developer, you can, you're of course more than welcome to hack on them and um, yeah, contribute. But keep in mind that it's all still very alpha. Um, there might be bugs, and uh, a lot of the stuff is still unfinished and very unpolished, and um, we're still missing a lot of features, of course. Um, and it needs the latest MediaWiki, and in case of the repository extension, also needs the Wikidata branch, uh, which holds the, the content handler code, which Daniel talked about. Right. Um, so, what can you do with your own um, Wikidata instance? Um, well, you, you can use it on a single wiki. Um, you can just um, install both the client and repository extension and use it there. Um, so you get, uh, can reuse data. Um, yeah, have it just in one place. Actually, much like um, you can do with SMW. Um, and then you can associate uh, facts uh, with this data, and yeah, very useful. Um, and you can also just have uh, the client installed and get the data from Wikidata um, and do additional things with it next to whatever your wiki is about. And of course, you can um, do the same thing as we'll be doing at the foundation. You can have multiple wikis with one repository wiki and multiple clients. So, um, differences with Semantic MediaWiki. Um, first one is that Semantic MediaWiki um, has uh, no notion of um, references uh, and that, yeah, Everything in semantic media wiki is true, right? So th that's the first difference. Um, it's also not really multilingual, whereas Wikidata is. Um, on the other side, um, semantic media wiki supports more complex data types. Uh, for instance, it allows users to define records. Uh, it also allows uh, specifying of so-called um, sub-objects or internal objects internal objects, which allows you to um, describe multiple items on a single article. And we're sort of, by design, uh, not allowing for this in Wikidata, um, because it, it doesn't really fit the use case of Wikipedia, but it's very useful for a lot of other people. So um, we get asked a lot uh, if Wikidata is not the new new thing. Uh, it, it's not the new semantic Wiki, but there are definitely, each has its own use case, so yeah. Um, semantic media wiki also allows for more complex queries. Uh, again, this is by design that in um, Wikidata we will be limiting this for performance reasons and just um, to prevent people from doing too crazy stuff. Um, we're also aiming at getting uh, overlapping developer communities between uh, SMW and Wikidata um, because there will probably be quite some components that can be shared. Uh, one very obvious one here are the result formats of Semantic Media Wiki, which Danny already demoed earlier on or, well, showed some screenshots of. Um, and another thing um, that would be nice to have is having some kind of integration with Semantic Media Wiki so that the people that are running in a uh, Semantic Media Wiki instance uh, can easily have it act as a client to Wikidata. Um, yeah. So um, that is my talk. Um, so now I'd like to hear your thoughts and uh, any questions you might have. Yeah. Um, so you talked about earlier how um, how the info boxes were. It was the reverse of DBpedia. Um, but 
I mean, this seems to have a lot of similarities to DBpedia and Freebase in how you uh, are, are making advanced queries uh, to get information out of it. How do you see um, how do you see the types of queries that you can do to Wikidata, Wikidata as differing from those other projects, and what types of query languages do you foresee using? So um, Freebase is a very different thing than DBpedia. Um, because Freebase is actually much closer to what Wikidata is aiming to, uh, was Wikidata is aiming for. Um, and um, I think I saw here someone from Freebase actually sitting, so we, he can probably also answer on the relationship between us. Um, regarding the query languages, uh, Wikidata will support as powerful a query language as is possible for the infrastructure that we will have, uh, will be built on and as powerful as necessary for our use cases. So we will not provide a full Sparkle uh, query language or something like this, simply because we can't. We don't have the resources for letting everyone ask arbitrary Sparkle queries. We will provide a full data dump, which um, others can upload, and um, then on their own local machines provide um, for example, Sparkle um, and um, queries on top of that. And we are already having queries from a number of companies who want actually to do that in order to um, demonstrate the stability and scalability of their systems. So I expect that there will be Sparkle endpoints against the Wikidata knowledge base, but it's not uh, what we will provide. I mean, if it shows that we were actually be able to provide it, I'd be very happy to do that. Just knowing the technology, I'm afraid that we cannot do that. Um, but I expect that others will. So so we will provide a quite basic query language on top of that, much more basic than I for Sparkle or um, uh, MQL on Freebase. But we will give the whole data set out and parts of the data set so that others can do much smarter things on top of that. Hi. Um, I love what I hear, I think. I'm really excited about Wikidata. I'm curious as to the inherent conflicts of what I think I, I, I see that Wikidata engenders a um, move towards exhaustiveness, where Wikipedia noti Wikipedia's notability requirement may conflict with exhaustiveness. So, uh, yeah. Who wants to take it? Okay. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that we really aim as at uh, exhaustiveness. We aim at um, the basically the size and scope of a database that can be maintained by the community we have. And the rules uh, will also be laid down and enforced by the community. I expect that the uh, notability or inclusion, inclusion rules will be different from the ones on Wikipedia, but I also expect there will be some. Wanted to ask if uh, uh, you have uh, some uh, page protection system, and if it's uh, uh, language based or item based, or what is? There will be there will definitely be item based page protection. This is the beauty of the uh, of the uh, um, idea of just storing JSON instead of wiki text, right? We have all the all the standard media wiki mechanisms are there, watching pages, protecting pages, all that stuff, is, uh, talk pages, it's, it's all just there. We don't have to do anything to get it. Um, we may want to implement more fine-grained mechanisms in the future, but I actually, I would first like to see the problem that we want to solve before designing a solution. My question is uh, basically this is a very, potentially a very disruptive uh, feature that uh, Wikidata is offering and it, I can envision all sorts of uh, conflicts about access to the data and it, I, I was wondering, are, is your team going to enforce the, uh, there's going to be power struggles, I couldn't just see it. 
Yeah. So I fully agree. This is potentially very disruptive. So there are two kind of disruptions that may that we may cause. The first is the kind of disruption to the rest of the web because there will be a free knowledge base for everyone to use, and we are not make we not paying a lot of attention to this kind of disruption because I think this is a positive one because we're just going to shuffle the, the cards on the web if we, if, if we achieve the goal that we want to have. The second one is possible disruptions on the Wikipedias. So there we are much more careful, obviously. Um, f so for everything that Wikidata offers, we make it very clear that it is an offer. The language links can be switched on on an article by article page every single statement that is being reused from Wikidata is completely voluntarily used by that language community for that article. Um, so there, you don't have to use the Wikidata data. You don't have to use the Wikidata statement that is considered the best by the Wikidata team. You can use another one based on the sources. You can just use locally the ones you want to have. You can locally override what, uh, what Wikidata is offering. So the Wikipedias themselves remain completely autonomous in which data they want to use, in which data they want to display, if they want uh, to display the data at all. It's, it's, uh, it's an offer. Having said that, I'm aware that there might be social pressure from parts of the Wikipedians saying, oh, you know, if it's there, we should use it. Um, and this is something that it's very hard to estimate how this will develop and uh, how this will happen. Um, but from the technology side, I can say it's completely voluntarily and the communities have to decide how they will treat this offer of data that we provide. And it's the same move that has happened with Wikimedia Commons when it was introduced. Some communities have local pictures that they use. Some communities don't. They require everything to be loaded up to, uh, to Commons. Uh, and so on and so on. Um, so a very similar um, dynamics I expect to happen for Wikidata. And I, we are thinking all the time very hard um, what kind of negative disruptions this could have on the Wikipedias or the other projects. We're trying to avoid them. But if someone comes up with a possible scenario, we would very, very much want to hear about it so that we can think about how to solve that. Um, because this is the one, these are the things that we really have to be careful about. And we're trying to do anything to actually counter that. More questions? I was wondering what your thoughts are on the possibility of third party search engines um, using Wikidata as a platform to provide answers to queries instead of Wikipedia itself and any implications that might have, say, on uh, Wikipedia's overall traffic and uh, user base. I think that's awesome. Um, having anyone using the knowledge that the, f uh, that the Wikimedia projects are providing in any way, I think that every Wikimedian is happy about that. Sure, it could drive down the number of um, visitors, but in the end, it's, um, it's about getting knowledge to people and not about driving more and more people to the Wikimedia sites. If, um, I think I'm citing um, Liam with this one. If we figured out that the best way to get knowledge to people is by having uh, pigeons sending books around in the world, then we would be in the business of actually training pigeons. So our task is not to have the, uh, the most um, people visiting our sites. Our, our task is to have our knowledge disseminate as widely as possible. Has there it, been... Oh, isn't it nice to be a charity? Has there been much discussion about how Wikidata could um, be used to, uh, what's the word I want to say, to integrate Dublin Core information into the, uh, the wikis? So Wikidata will widely adopt semantic web standards, and DC is also um, widely adopting se um, semantic web standards in the, in the current um, incarnation. So we expect that there will be 
quite an easy way to just uh, simply integrate this kind of things. Um, I would be surprised to see there too much um, uh, impedance between the technologies. M maybe I can jump in on that. We very much focus on giving citations for everything, right? And I expect that we will rely on external sources for importing bibliographic records to supply these references. Um, and Dublin Core is certainly an important part of that. Okay, one last question. Uh, there are uh, three different, there are three distinct translations uh, of each, around, of each word. S the semantics or the font translation, the me actual meaning translation, and the phonetic translation. So in Wikidata, how are you going to Will you include all three translations, or what? Um, I'm I'm not completely sure that I understood the did I, uh, So um, just if I can ask you to clarify, the question is: given a specific item, there are several ways that we can have a syntactic representation of it in in a language. Uh, yeah, when you translate from one language to another language you get different things. We are not translating anything. Yeah. We, we are providing uh, the possibility to give labels to items in different languages. Um, and if there are free ways to transliterate Bangladeshi, um, then I guess we would have free um, different languages versions. But, um, I'm not sure how. Well, I'm not sure about the Bangladeshi situation. But for example, for uh, things like Serbian, we are thinking of providing automatic um, transliteration between the Cyrillic and the Latin version. And uh, for other languages like the different Norwegian languages, for example, we simply have three different Norwegian languages. Um, so I, I think that this might be settled also for the Bangladeshi situation. But I would be happy to talk to you about that if I misunderstood it, to see if. We have to change something about that. So pick yeah. me up if I did misunderstood you. Yeah, let's clarify that yeah. after afterwards. Cool. Okay. So um, you want to close? Okay, so thank you very much for your attention. It's late. Um, we are finished with our time. We will have more time tomorrow to talk. There will be a panel uh, with a different set of panelists about Wikidata. I would be very happy if you make it there. We have three more hours of voting of on, on our logo. Um, <laughs> So go to the website and do that. And thank you very much for being here. It was a pleasure to uh, talk to you.